guys, I'm Nan Ed Louie and welcome to my next video. So yesterday you would have seen my Dawn of Justice breakdown video and in this video another trailer came out, it's the Suicide Squad trailer, I'm going to be breaking that down for you as well. Just going into a little detail about some of the things that are in the trailer, some of the references to bits in the comics and just how I think the movie looks so far. So yeah, let's get straight into the video. First of all, I just want to talk to you about Harley Quinn. Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn in this movie seems really, really good from what we've seen so far from the trailer. It's very acrobatic, which is close to the comics. Completely mental, which again, close to the comics. And she seems to have a very large role within this movie. Like, you would think with the Joker being in this movie, you'd think, oh, she's probably not going to have that much of a big role. But she seems to be in, she's in the majority of the trailer. I mean, the Joker only crops up near the end. And she seems to be causing all sorts of trouble. She seems to be sort of leading the Suicide Squad when the Joker's not around. The Joker hasn't really been pictured sort of working together with the Suicide Squad. So it's going to be funny to see how he sort of comes into it. But I'm going to be talking about him later. Anyway, for now, Harley Quinn. I like the voice that she's got. It's, it's, it's sort of reminds me of Tara Strong's voice. But at the same time, it's her own voice, it's Margot Robbie's own interpretation on the character, which is good because we don't want it to be exactly the same. However, to have something sort of close and sort of echoing Tara Strong's Harley Quinn, which is obviously extremely iconic, is a great thing. Can you hear me? Is this thing on? Oh, hiya, B-Man. Harley Quinn here. How do you like my new uniform? Pretty hot, huh? Another character that we see in the trailer is Killer Croc and he looks absolutely badass in this. It's a smaller version of the character than some comics. Some comics picture him as a huge massive like brute that looks more like a crocodile with a man um, than a man sorry. And uh, But within this we have a smaller version which is in some, some comics you know. Um, obviously with the large version was also in Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City and you know he just this version it seems more going down the route of sort of more realistic I suppose like obviously someone looking, looking like that isn't particularly realistic but it seems to have some sort of like condition or genetic condition that sort of thing where he some of the origins of him in the comics are different depending on which kind of comics like New 52 is different from say like the original Batman comics or something like that it's just all different but within this we're going for a smaller version more realistic version still looks like a boss next character we have is will smith who will be playing deadshot in the movie and will smith has got a massive background of being in action movies you know obviously you had i am legend you've had hancock you've had men in black all these movies so i think he's just going to slot straight in there it's not an unusual role for him to be playing but also in this sort of with this dead shot he seems to be more of a deeper character than just a straight up assassin um in the comics he does actually have a daughter and when he figures out he has a daughter he tries to sort of clean up the neighborhood that the daughter's living around by essentially killing people but then he realizes that's not really helping so he enlists green arrow to just stop by and help in the neighborhood that his daughter is living because that's within star city which is uh, green arrow's home city but also in the trailer you can see that Deadshot is hugging um, what looks to be his daughter, I'm guessing that's his daughter. So it's just showing another side to Deadshot, rather he's not just a ruthless assassin, he does have sort of a care inside and he does have personal things in his life that do actually really matter to him and obviously he has, he has family in this, it's clear to see. Great thing about this trailer is it's starting to show the world within this movie as a sort of... An, the same universe as the Man of Steel and obviously Dawn of Justice are starting to create a DC cinematic universe which to be fair that is what DC needs to be doing in order to catch up with Marvel because Marvel have been doing it since like what 2008 something 2007 2008 something like that and they really really need to catch up and it does seem like they're going to be doing this I think this movie is going to help them a long way and combined with Dawn of Justice I think it's going to be a pretty big summer for for DC um, and it's just great to see that they starting to link it up and the evidence that we have that it's starting to link up is near the beginning of the trailer one of the people says Superman 
maybe was a beacon for them to creep back from the shadows and by that he's talk uh, they're talking about the villains or you know all these I guess these members of the suicide squad start to come out of the the shadows and that's evidence on the screen with this sort of picture of someone in a cave and I'm guessing this is where they discover Killer Croc it, that, that's my only guess as to where that could be but who knows so yeah it's just showing that they're mentioning Superman so they're mentioning like man from Man of Steel and they're just linking that universe together and that's what they really need to do in order to build this franchise up also I found out in this trailer that char the characters within this so all the villains you know Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Killer Croc all them they seem to start off working with the military but then it, things kind of go a bit wayward and the villains seem to turn on the military and turn on the sort of law enforcement forces and all these people that they were supposedly working with before. I'm not entirely sure it, when this happens in the movie, I'm not sure if this is towards the beginning of the movie then they join the with the military at the end or if it's the other way around they start off working with the military uh, but then they sort of get bored and realise that they're they can escape from this and they can do what they want essentially and it starts a, they start attacking the military and attacking people and going back to more of the sort of villainous ways of as how they were and I think that I'm not entirely sure within the chron chronology of this movie I think these sort of characters they would have sort of Batman would have encountered them many times before it's not going to be new for him because in the Dark Knight trilogy we saw that that it was obviously Batman meeting a lot of the villains for the first time and even in the Tim Burton Batmans you also saw that he was meeting a lot of these villains for the first time so it's interesting that they're going with this way where he's the villains are already established there's no messy origin stories we might get the, the occasional flashback but it's not going to be an origin thing and I think that's really really where they need to go and especially with Dawn of Justice with the Batman aspect yeah it gives us a little bit, bit, his, bit of his origin but we already know his origin he, his parents get killed in an alleyway he becomes Batman end of story <clears throat> so it's interesting that they're going for this with the villains because it will mean that I think the storyline will go that all these villains have been locked up over, over time and eventually they've done stuff so bad that they've been put in like the worst prisons as I think they said something about in the trailer um, they're in a hole underneath the hole or something like that or the hole within the hole it's like literally like the worst prison you could possibly be in but then through this they get given a second chance and I'm guessing the second chance goes badly wrong for the people who tried to get them to work together for good and they seem to be just doing their own thing I mean you see Harley Quinn driving around in a freaking Lamborghini which leads me on to my next point Batman is in this movie. Um, I wasn't expecting this. I mean, I heard sort of rumours and from the like the leaked footage, but I didn't really watch much of it because it got leaked and then it got took down like straight away. Uh, I saw a few shots of it. And I suspected that he might be in this movie, but yeah, Batman's in this movie. Harley Quinn's driving a Lamborghini. Batman's just clinging on to the top as you do, um, and Harley Quinn makes a joke saying, oh, "I hope you've got insurance." So. I'm not too sure if she's on about like life insurance because she's gonna like kill Batman or if she's just on about like car insurance because she's stolen the car from I guess Batman or Bruce Wayne or something like that you know but it, it seems like a cool car to be honest like a metallic -y, reddy pinky Lamborghini it's pretty cool but obviously you can see Batman here just hanging on the top of it now I'm not sure if this will be a flashback sequence so it could be the after the villain sort of jaw, uh, leave the military and start like taking over and just wreaking havoc you now as they do that Batman will come in and try and stop them or if it's a flashback sequence just showing what happened before Harley Quinn was put in like the prison and Batman was just there before because obviously in this universe it's probably going to be that Batman has, bit, has faced his villains before. Now for the final part probably the bit you've been most excited about because I know I was most excited about this and it is we finally get to see the Jared Leto Joker in action now he looks absolutely boss a lot of people are saying that they don't like him because of all the tattoos and stuff like that but you know it's just a fresh look on the character I mean when you first saw the Heath Ledger Joker you were probably thinking the fuck's this guy's got fucking long hair makeup instead of like you know like Obviously, he didn't fall in a vat of acid in that. He, everyone thought, oh, it's going to be terrible. Then when they actually watched the movie, is one of the greatest Jokers that's ever been on screen. So, you know, I think Jared Loker 
Jared Loker, what the fuck? I've just created a new person. Jared Leto, it's a Joker. He seems very iconic. He seems quite close to the comics in, in this look. He's, he's, you know, the way he dresses and his sort of build and that sort of thing. And he seems completely batshit crazy as always. But he does seem very original. Like, I don't think he's trying to copy off anyone when he does his performance. He's doing his sort of own Joker, taking influence from all the Jokers in, in the comics, when, whether it's the Mark Hamill voice, whether it's Heath Ledger, you know, Jack Nicholson, whoever it is. He seems to be his own voice, but he's taking sort of hints and sort of... In, he's taking an influence from those. Um, the voice... When I first heard it, it sounded very similar to Heath Ledger, but then it sort of got when uh, when he spoke more, it started to sound different. I think it's just because I'm used to that one being on screen and like movies and stuff, so I was ex kind of expecting the Heath Ledger one. But he does sound like it's it's and again, it's a, an original voice. It's not completely copied, but it's sort of taken influence from Heath Ledger's Joker, which is I like to see. I mean. I just hope this Joker is really, really close to the comics because even though Heath Ledger was an amazing Joker, the way they wrote him in to that, it was so different from the comics. It was like, bruh. It was kind of just like, those movies, like the Dark Knight trilogy, they were sort of close to the comics, but not that close. And I just really hope that these, these upcoming movies within the DC Cinematic Universe, that, God, that sounds so weird to say. I'm not used to saying the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But anyway... The DC Cinematic Universe, I think they're going for really close to the comics, which I actually beg, because Man of Steel was way too far from the comics, and I hope, just hope they're going to bring it back with Dawn of Justice and with Suicide Squad. So yeah, I just really hope that the Jared Leto Joker is really close to the Mark Hamill Joker, or the Mark Hamill Joker voice, because honestly, that's my favourite. Joker's back in town. <laughs> anyway guys, that does bring the video to a close. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment on what your opinions are on the Suicide Squad trailer and how you think the movie is looking so far. I'm going to leave a link in the description so you can go and check out the full trailer if you haven't already. But you probably have. Subscribe if you enjoy my content in general. And I'll see you next time guys.